Welcome to Let It Be About Him First, Lord Jesus Christ. On this channel, I'll be reading through the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Let's learn about Lord Jesus the Christ together. The fourth book of Moses called Numbers, chapter 23. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he sheweth me I will tell thee. And he went to a high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, hath brought me from the ram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them all together. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and curse me them from thence. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering, while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princess of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shot of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath as it were the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speak is that I must do. And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place, for adventure will please God, that thou mayest curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor, and look, that looketh toward Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Chapter 24 And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, 
And the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel, as the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of a line of aloes which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seeds shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his, with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion and as a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor. But lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak will give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. <clears throat> and he took up his parable and said, Belaine, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, He hath said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until a shearer shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live with God? Who shall live when God doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to its place. And Balak also went his way. Chapter 25 And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from amongst the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them. 
while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Koski, the daughter of Zer. He was head over a people and a chief house in Midian. And of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince of Media, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague of Peor's sake, for Peor's sake. Chapter 26 And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from twenty years old and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eleazar the priests spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from twenty years old and upwards, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, the eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanak, of whom cometh the family of the Hanakites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites. And they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram, that is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. The sons of Simeon, after their families of Nimiel, the family of the Nimielites, of Jemen, the family of the Geminites, of Jachin, the family of the Jachinites, of Zebra, the family of the Zarhites, of Shaw, the family of the Shawites. These are the families of the Semonites, twenty and two thousand and two hundred. The children of Gad, after their families of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shuni, the family of the Shunites, of Osni, the family of the Osnites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arod, the family of the Aradites, of Areli, the family of the Arelites. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, 40,500. The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, after their families, were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Piraeus, the family of the Tharsites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Piraeus were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamal, the family of the Hamalites. These are the families of Judah, according to those who were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Issachar, after their families of Tola, the family of the Tolates, of Pua, the family of the Punites, of Jeshub, the family of the Jashubites, of Shemron, the family of the Shemronites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those who were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, after their families of Sarai, the family of the Sardites of Elan, the family of the Elanites of Jali, the family of the Jalilites. These are the families of the, Zebul the Zebulunites, according to those that were numbered of them, three score thousand and five hundred. The sons of Joseph, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Maker, the family of the Makerites. And Mekur begat Gilead, of Gilead come the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Helic, the family of the Helicites, and of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites. 
and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, and of Shemitah, the family of the Shemitites, and of Hepher, the family of the Hepherites, and of Zelophehad, the, the son of Hepher, had no sons. And Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, had no sons. The daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala and Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Teresa. These are the families of Manasseh, and those that were numbered of them, fifty and two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families, of Shuthala, the family of the Shuthalites, of Baker, the family of the Bakerites, of Tahan, the family of the Tahanites. And these are the sons of Shuthala, of Eren, the family of the Erenites. These are the, the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. These are the sons of Joseph after their families, the sons of Benjamin after their families, of Bela, the family of the Belates, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiram, Hiramites, of Shepham, the family of the Shephamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman of Ard, and the family, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the, the sons of Dan after their families, of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuhamites, according to those that were numbered of them, were three score and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Asher, after their families of Jemna, the family of the Jemnites, of Jesuai, the family of the Jesuites, of Beriah, the family of the Berites, of the sons of Beriah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Machiel, the family of the Machielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asia, according to those that were numbered of them, who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families of Jazia, the family of the Jazalites, of Guni, the family of the Gunites, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Shalem, the family of the Shalemites. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families. And they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were the numbered of the children these were the numbered of the children of Israel six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot, according to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Levites and their families of, and their families. of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Merari, the family of the Merarites, these are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, the family of the Mushites, and the family of the Korahites. And Kohath begot Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And they Dab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. These are they that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered, when they numbered the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord has said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness, and there was not left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Chapter 27 
Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Mekur, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the Man of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses, and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes, and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord, in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount of Bera, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou shalt surely be gathered unto thy people, as Abraham thy brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zen, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes, that is, the water of Meribah and Kadesh in the wilderness of Zen. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Chapter 28 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifice is made by fire. For a sweet savour unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even. And a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was offered which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of a hen for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at even as the meat offering of the morning, as the drink offering thereof. Thou shalt offer it as a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering, and its drink offering. And in the beginnings of your months, ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks, and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one bullock, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram. 
and a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb for a burnt offering of a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offering shall be half a hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of a hen unto a ram, and the fourth part of a hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered, besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock. And two tenth deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shall thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs. And one go for a sin offering to make atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals unto one bullock, two tenth deals unto one ram, a several tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them besides the continual burnt offering and its meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their drink offerings. Chapter 29 And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord. One young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals for a bullock, and two tenth deals for a ram, and one tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you, beside the burnt offering of the month, and his meat offering, and the daily burnt offering, and his meat offering, and their drink offerings according unto their manner for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord unto the Lord. And ye shall have on the tenth day of this service <clears throat> and ye shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month a holy convocation. And ye shall afflict your souls. Ye shall not do any work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savor. One young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year, they shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals to a bullock and two tenth deals to one ram. A several tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. One kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the sin offering of atonement. And the continual burnt offering and the meat offering of it and their drink offerings. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Thirteen young bullocks. Two rams and fourteen lambs of the first year, they shall be without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals unto every bullock of the thirteen bullocks, two tenth deals to each ram of the two rams, and a several tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteen lambs. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the second day ye shall offer twelve young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot. And their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering and the meat offering thereof and their drink offerings. 
And on the third day, 11 bullocks, 11 bullocks, two rams, 14 lambs at the first year without blemish. And their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one go for a sin offering besides the continual burnt offering and his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the fourth day, 10 bullocks, two rams, and 14 lambs of the first year without blemish. Their meat offering and their drink offerings for the, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fifth day, nine bullocks, two rams, and 14 lambs of the first year without spot. And their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one go for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the sixth day, eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one go for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And one go for a sin offering. Me. And on the sixth day, eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering and their drink offering for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one go for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of, of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one go for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. On the eighth day, ye shall have a solemn assembly. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering and sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. One bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish. Their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things ye shall do unto the Lord in your set feasts. Besides your vows and your free will offerings for your burnt offerings and for your meat offerings and for your drink offerings and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. Chapter 30. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear, an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow in her bond, wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all a husband when she vowed or uttered out out of her lips, ordered out out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallow her on the day that her that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow, and of that, and of her that is divorced wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, 
Then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establisheth all her vows or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirmeth them because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall in any ways make them void after that he hath heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. Chapter 31 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children, avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shall thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every, of every tribe, a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel, shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe. Them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males, and they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were not, that were slain, namely Evi and Rechem, and Zer and Hur and Reba, five kings of Midian. The lame also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of, of Midian captive, captives, and their little ones, and took the spoil of all their cattle, and all their flocks, and all their goods. And they burned all their cities wherein they dwelt, and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest, and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp of the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them with, without the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and the captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Belaim to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days. Whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. And purify all your raiment, and all that is made of skins, and all work of goat's hair, and all things made of wood. And Eliezer the priest said unto the men of war which went to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of... separation and all that abideth not the fire ye shall make go through the water <clears throat> and ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and ye shall be clean and afterwards ye shall come into the camp and the Lord spake unto Moses saying take the sum of the prey that was taken both of man and of beast thou and Eliezer the priest and the chief fathers of the congregation and abide the prey into two parts between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle in between all the congregation. And levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons and of the, the beeves and of the asses and of the sheep. Take it of their half and give it unto Eliezer the priest for a heave offering of the Lord. 
and the children of Israel's half, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons, of the beeves, of the asses, and of the flocks, of all manner of beasts, and give them unto the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty being the rest of the prey, which the men of war had caught, was 600,000 and 70,000 and 5,000 sheep. And three score and twelve thousand beeves, and three score and one hundred ass, and three score and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all, all women that had not known man but lying with him. And the half which was the portion of them that went out to war was in number three three hundred thousand and seven and thirty thousand and five hundred sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was six hundred and three score and fifteen. And the beeves were thirty and six thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was three score and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which the Lord's tribute was three score and one. And the persons were sixteen thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering, unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. And of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men that warred, now the half that pertained unto the congregation was three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep, and thirty and six thousand beeves, and thirty thousand asses, and five hundred and sixteen thousand persons. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one portion of fifty, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Levites, which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the officers, which were over thousands of the host, the captains over the, the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near unto Moses, and they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war which are under our charge, and were la and there lacketh not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord, what every man hath gotten of jewels of gold chains and bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eliezer the priests took the gold of them, even all round jewels, and all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord, of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundreds, was 16,750 shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil of every man for himself. And Moses and Eliezer the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Chapter 32 Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eliezer the priest and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Adaroth and Dubon and Jazer and Nimrah, and Heshbon and Elile, and Shebam and Nebo, and beyond. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for possession, and bring us not over Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Thus did your fathers, when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land, for when they went up unto the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel, that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time, and he swore, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land, which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Say Peleb, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they were wholly following, for they have wholly followed the Lord. 
And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years until all the congregation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. For if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all his people. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready on before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side Jordan. Or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side, Jordan, eastward. And Moses said unto them, If ye would do this thing, if ye would go armed before the Lord to war, and would go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord, until he hath driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return, and be guiltless before the Lord, and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye would not do so, Behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Build ye cities for your little ones, and folds for your sheep, and do that which hath proceeded out of your mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commanded. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. But thy servants will pass over, every man armed for war before the Lord to battle, as my Lord said. So concerning them, Moses, Moses commanded Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben would pass with you over Jordan, every man armed to battle before the Lord, and the land shall be subdued before you, then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for possession. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possession among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord hath said unto thy servants, so we will do. So will we do. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side Jordan may be ours. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, and unto the half tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sion, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land, with the cities thereof and the coast, even the cities of the country round about. And the children of Gad built Dibon and Adaroth and Aurora, and Atroth, Shophan, and Jazer, and Jogbea, and Beth Nemra, and Beth Haran, fence cities and folds for sheep. And the children of Reuben built Heshbon and Elile and Kerjathain and Nebo and Bavmion, their names being changed, and Shipma, and gave other names unto the cities which they builded. And the children of Maker, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it, and dispossessed the Amorite which was in it. And Moses gave Gilead unto Maker, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Jer, the son of Manasseh, went and took the small towns thereof, and called them Havoth Jer. And Noble went and took Kenneth and the villages thereof and called it Noble after his own name. Chapter 33. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramesses in the first month. On the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which the Lord had smitten among them upon their gods. Also the Lord executed judgments. And the children of Israel removed from Ramesses and pitched in Sukkoth. And they departed from Sukkoth and pitched in Etham which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham and turned again unto Pihahira, which is before Bay-Siphon. And they pitched before Migdal. And they departed from before 
Pihahirath, and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham, and pitched in Marah. And they removed from Marah and came unto Elam. And in Elam were twelve fountains of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elam and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. And they took their journey out of the wilderness of Sin and encamped in Dafka. And they departed from Dafka and encamped in Elush. And they removed from Elush and encamped in Rephidim, where was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Rephidim and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And they removed from the desert of Sinai and pitched in Kibrath Hatava. And they departed from Kibrath Hatava and encamped at Hazaroth. And they departed from Hazaroth and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma and pitched at Ramon Perez. Perez. And they departed from Ramon Perez and pitched in Libna. And they removed from Libna and pitched in Rissa. And they journeyed from Rissa and pitched in Kehilatha. And they went from Kehilatha and pitched in Mount Shafer. And they removed from Mount Shafer and encamped in Harada. And they removed from Harada and pitched in Mothaloth. And they removed from Mothaloth and encamped at Tahath. And they departed from Tahath and pitched at Tara. And they removed from Tara and pitched in Mitha, Mithka. And they went from Mithka and pitched in Hashemona. Hashmona. And they departed from Hash, Hashmona and encamped at Masara. And they departed from Masara and pitched in Beni Jakin. And they removed from Beni Jakin and encamped at Hor Hagidgad. And they went from Hor Hagidgad and pitched in Jabatha, Jabatha. And they removed from Jabatha and encamped at Ebrana. And they departed from Ebrana and encamped at Ezion Gaber. And they removed from Ezion Gaber and pitched in the wilderness of Zen, which is Kadesh. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched in Mount Hor, in the edge of the land of Edom. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel were came were come out of the land of Egypt in the day in the first day of the fifth month. And Aaron was in a hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Arad the Canaanite which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan heard of the coming of the children of Israel. And they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zalmona. And they departed from Zalmona and pitched in Punan. And they departed from Punan and pitched in Oboth. And they departed from Oboth and pitched in Aij Abiram, in the border of Moab. And they departed from Lim, from Iam and pitched in Dibon Gad. And they departed from Dibon Gad and encamped in Almon Diblathain. And they removed from Almon Diblathain. And pitched in the mountains of Abiram before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abiram and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. And they pitched by Jordan from Beth Jesimoth even unto Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth, 
according to the tribes of your fathers, ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Chapter 34 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan with the coast thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zan, along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast of the salt sea eastward. And your border shall turn from the south to the ascent of Acrabim, and pass on to Zan. And the going forth thereof shall be from the south of Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazar Adar, and pass on to Asmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the river of Egypt. And the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, you shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border. And this shall be your north border. From the great sea you shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath. And the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Ziphron. And the goings out of it shall be at Hazarinan. This shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazarinan to Shepham. And the coast shall go down from Shepham to Ribla on the east side of Aian. And the border shall descend and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Chinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan. And the goings out of it shall be at the salt sea. This shall be your land with the coast thereof round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which you shall inherit by lot, which the Lord commanded to give unto the nine tribes and to the half tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half tribe have received their inheritance on this side Jordan near Jericho, eastward toward the sun rising. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you. Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh. And of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amiud. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad the son of Chislon. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki the son of Jogli. The prince of the children of Joseph for the tribe of of the children of Manasseh, Haniel, the son of Ephah, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kimuel, the son of Shephtan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elizaphon, the son of Parnach, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Issachar, Paltiel, the son of Azan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahia, the son of Shalomi, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Petahel, the son of Amiud, these are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Chapter 35 And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possessions cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts. 
and the suburbs of the cities which he shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits, and on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits. And the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint to the manslayer, that he may flee thither. And to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel. From them that have many, ye shall give many. But from them that have few, ye shall give few. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance, which he inherited. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye become over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side, Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge both for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by lying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die. He that smite, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him sudden, suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying in wait, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he die, and was not his enemy, neither saw his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled. And he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled. And the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge. And the revenger of blood kill the slayer. He shall not be guilty of blood. Because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whosoever killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death. But he shall surely, but he shall be surely put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land unto the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood, it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. 
chapter 36. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Mekur, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near and spake before Moses and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe where tribe whereinto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father. And the, tr and the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. For Mala, Terza, and Hagla, and Milka, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho.